The concept the concept of God's mercy in Islam and Christianity, God's mercy, Quran Bible. God's mercy, Quran Bible. Is the God of the Bible more merciful than God in the Quran? One argument put forth against the Quran is that in the Quran people's fate in the hereafter is solely dependent on their works and deeds. Unlike Christianity where it's God's mercy that earns a person paradise. To get straight to the point, whoever put forth this argument has poor understanding, not only of the Quran, but also of his own Bible. To say that one book, Quran, speaks of people's deeds as the sole decider, while the other book, Bible, makes God's mercy the decider is totally false. The truth is that both books confirm the importance of both, our own deeds, as well as God's mercy. Since this argument claims that the Quran is about deeds while the Bible is about God's mercy, it is thus necessary to look at verses from each book which confirm the opposite of this claim. First, we look at verses from the Bible which confirm that deeds play a major role in deciding the fate of the human being in the hereafter. Following that, we also look at Quranic verses to show that God's mercy is the key decider in deciding the fate of the human being in the hereafter. It can also be shown from the Quran that God's mercy allows people who committed the worst of sins to be still forgiven and end up in paradise. First, verses from the Bible which confirm the importance of our deeds. Both the Old and New Testaments emphasize that a man's work and deeds do matter and they are not just a passive product. Numerous verses confirm that the final judgment on the last day will be based on each man's deeds. Old Testament Also to you, O Lord, belong mercy, for you render to each one according to his work. Psalm 62 verse 12 And will he not render to each man according to his deeds? Proverbs 24 verse 12 New Testament Now we can concentrate on the New Testament since the claim above always comes from Christians. In the New Testament we have a great number of verses to choose from. Each one will receive his own reward according to his own work. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 8 For we must all have our lives laid open before the judgment of Christ, where each will be recompensed for his deeds in the body, according to what he has done. Whether good or bad. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10 If you say our Father to the one who judges every man impartially on the record of his deeds, you must stand in awe of him while you live out your life on earth. 1 Peter 1 verse 17 Then another book was opened, The Role of Life. From what was written, the dead were judged according to their deeds. Revelations 20.12 All the above passages from the New Testament, and more could be added to the list, tell us that, according to the New Testament, the final judgment will be on the basis of deeds. To see if each man's life was lived in faithfulness to do all that was commanded of him. This is the verdict of the New Testament and it needs no elaboration. Therefore, to say that the Bible speaks of God's mercy as the only decider to a man's fate is contrary to all the biblical evidence presented. Second, verses from the Quran that confirm the importance of God's mercy. Say, all my servants who transgressed exceedingly against themselves, do not despair of God's mercy, for God forgives all sins. He is the forgiver, the merciful. 39, colon 53. Say, O messenger, to my servants who have gone beyond the limit against themselves by ascribing partners to Allah and committing sins. Do not lose hope of Allah's mercy and of his forgiveness for your sins. Allah forgives all the sins of those who repent to him. He is the forgiving towards the sins of those who repent and the merciful towards them. AZ Zimmer, 53 God promises you forgiveness from him and favor. 2 268 Satan makes you afraid of poverty by encouraging you to be stingy and he invites you to commit sins. Allah, on the other hand, promises you forgiveness for your sins and much provision. Allah is very bountiful and he knows the condition of his servants. Al-Baqarah, 268 Your Lord has decreed mercy upon himself. 654 When those who accept my signs that indicate the truth of what you have brought come to you, O Messenger, then reply to their greeting of peace in honor of them and tell them the good news of my mercy. I have gracefully made mercy obligatory on myself. If anyone among you commits sin out of ignorance and foolishness and then repents from that sin and sets their actions right, then I will forgive them. For I am forgiving and compassionate to the servant who repents to me. al 54 Your Lord has forgiveness for the people despite their transgressions. 13,6 The idolaters ask you, O messenger, to bring on the punishment and they inquire as to why it is taking so long to come on them before they completely enjoy the favors that Allah has decreed for them. 
Many such punishments have come before on people like them from the nations who disbelieved. Why do they not take a lesson from them? Your Lord, O Messenger, is one who pardons people despite their wrongdoing. He, therefore, does not rush to take retribution from them giving them a chance to repent to Allah. He is truly severe in punishing those who persist in their denial if they do not repent. Araraid, 6. It is thus very significant that God is called the Rahim, merciful, 95 times in the Quran. In addition, God is also called Gaffer, forgiver, 92 times in the Quran. The above Quranic verses confirm the importance of God's mercy and how it can override people's sins. The above evidence, from the Quran as well as the Bible, paints a totally different picture from the claim made above. The concept of God's mercy in Islam and Christianity. Muslims and Christians believe in one true God, the Lord of heavens and earth. They agree that God created us to examine us in this life. Such an exam means that we are given the freedom of choice and the ability to do sins and disobey our Lord. At this point, it comes the crossway. The biggest difference between Islam and Christianity is how each religion views the concept of God's mercy. How does God deal with sins? What is the way to salvation? In the following article, we will explore these questions and more. Salvation in Islam and Christianity In Islam, salvation is a personal choice. The belief alone is not enough and good deeds alone are not enough. There are at least three elements needed for salvation. Belief in Allah and His Messenger, Muhammad. Good deeds, following the teachings of Allah and His Messenger, and living by them. Allah's mercy after all of that. The Prophet said, Do good deeds properly, sincerely and moderately, and receive good news because one's good deeds will not make him enter paradise. They asked, Even you, O oh Allah's Messenger? He said, Even I. Unless and until Allah bestows his pardon and mercy on me. Hadith. In Christianity, the theory is that Adam and Eve sinned by eating the forbidden fruit. Their transgression is inherited by all their offspring. We are all born bearing the burden of the original sin. To attain forgiveness in Christianity, the most important is the belief in the death of Jesus on the cross for our sins. Is this spilling of Jesus' innocent blood that saves humanity? Jesus has taken the punishment that humanity deserves because of its sin, once and for all. God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood. Shed on the cross. Colossians 1 verses 19 to 20. God's nature, a God who loves to pardon vs a God who is delighted in blood. Prophet Muhammad teaches us that God loves to pardon and loves to show mercy. It is narrated that No one is more fond of accepting an excuse than Allah, on account of which he has sent messengers, announcers of glad tidings and warners. Hadith He taught his wife, Aisha, to say that beautiful prayer. O oh Allah, indeed, you are pardoning, generous, you love to pardon, so pardon me. Hadith So, our God is all-loving. He loves his creation and forgives them and none can question him. Do you know that the statement that Allah is most forgiving and merciful is found no less than 81 times in the Holy Quran? Almost every chapter of the Quran starts with this verse, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. His huge mercy is manifested through sending guidance to humanity to bring them out of the darkness of falsehood. And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except his mercy to the worlds. Quran 21, 107 O Muhammad! I have not sent you as a messenger, except as a merciful one to the whole of creation. This is because you are distinguished with aspiring for the guidance of all people and their safety from the punishment of Allah. Al-Anbaya, 107
On the other hand, Paul, in his letters, makes it very clear that blood is a must to take away the sins of humanity. Not the blood of a normal sacrifice, but the blood of a perfect sacrifice, and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. Hebrews 9 verse 22 Since only God is perfect, it must be he then who must take human form, and allow himself to be tortured and killed for the faults of his creatures. Thus, we enter the truly mind-blowing vicious circle of a God who punishes himself to forgive the men and women who offended him. In Islam God's mercy overpowers his anger. Imagine a child has made a mistake, which, he knows, will arouse the anger of his mother. Trying to reform what he did. He comes to his mother crying and begging for pardon, promising not to do that again. What will a loving mother do? Will she punish him or will she forgive him? The Prophet said, when Allah completed the creation, he wrote in his book which is with him on his throne, My mercy overpowers my anger. Hadith. This means that if we sin and then repent sincerely to him, he accepts our apology and forgives us. He loves to pardon. His mercy is much greater than his anger. In the Quran in chapter 6 verse 12, we read. He has decreed upon himself mercy. Quran 6 12. Say to them, O messenger, to whom does dominion of the heavens and the earth, and whatever is between them, belong? Say, their total control belongs to Allah. He has established mercy upon himself out of grace for his servants, and will therefore not rush to punish them. If they do not repent, he will gather them together on the day of rising, a day about which there is no doubt. Those who have lost their souls by bringing them to the point of destruction, due to their disbelief in Allah, will not believe and rescue their souls from loss. al 12 Moreover, Anas ibn Malik, one of the prophets, companions, heard him saying, Allah, the Exalted, has said, O son of Adam, I forgive you as long as you pray to me and hope for my forgiveness, whatever sins you have committed. O son of Adam, I do not care if your sins reach the height of the heaven, then you ask for my forgiveness, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, if you come to me with an earth load of sins, and meet me associating nothing to me, I would match it with an earth load of forgiveness. Hadith. On the contrary, the Christian scheme of salvation requires that there exists a conflict between God's mercy and justice. God cannot tolerate sin. But he wants our relationship with him to be restored. So something has to be done about the sin. His justice requires that the sinner must be punished. But his mercy requires that he forgive the sinner. Now, mercy versus justice. Thus, the suicide of God is presented as the exit out of this dilemma. Sin is not the end. In Islam, the story of creation is different from that in Genesis. After eating from the forbidden tree, Adam and Eve regretted their sin. They both repented sincerely, and God accepted their repentance. They set an example for us to follow when we fall into the pitfall of sins. Thus, there is no original sin that is passed on from one generation to another. The Quran emphasizes the fact that and no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another. Quran 17:15. Whoever is guided to faith, then the reward of his being guided is for his own good, and whoever goes astray, the punishment for his going astray is to his detriment. No soul carries the sin of another soul, nor do I ever punish a people until I establish proof against them by sending messengers to them. al 15 More importantly, the wages of sin are not death. Sin is a means for us to grow closer to God. Yes, seriously, if you sin, you could grow closer to God by repenting. When a man sins, he should regret, repent, reform, and turn to God directly, asking him for pardon. This process makes God happy because the sinner submits more to his Lord and acknowledges the power of God above him who can punish or forgive him. The sinner then repents directly to him, not to Muhammad, Abraham, or Jesus. Man is programmed to sin. The best of the sinners are those who repent. Abu Huraira reported that Allah's messenger said, by him in whose hand is my life, if you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah. And he would have pardoned them. Hadith. Final Call. In conclusion, one of the main characteristics of true religion is that it leads us to glorify God and think highly of him. Cannot God forgive sins without any ransom? Losing blood gushing from the veins of a physical body has no links to mercy. The mercy of God does not demand that Jesus, Muhammad, or God himself should die in order to secure eternal life and salvation. 
Jesus clearly mentions that he wants mercy and not sacrifice, so why does Pauline's law make Jesus into a curse by becoming the ransom sacrifice to pay for humanity's sins? Now, my dear reader, the two roads split in front of you. Which way appeals more to your heart and mind? For salvation, will you rely on ransomed blood or will you worship your Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, follow his apostle Muhammad, and have trust in the mercy of God? Think deeply, do your research, and ask God to open your heart to accept the truth. Say, all my servants who have transgressed against themselves, by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, it is he who is the forgiving, the merciful. Quran 39, 53 Say, O Messenger, to my servants who have gone beyond the limit against themselves by ascribing partners to Allah and committing sins. Do not lose hope of Allah's mercy and of his forgiveness for your sins. Allah forgives all the sins of those who repent to him. He is the forgiving towards the sins of those who repent and the merciful towards them. Az Zimmer, 53 For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings, Hosea 6 verse 6. But go and learn what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Matthew 9 verse 13